Welcome to Electrical Circuit Analysis. Throughout this lecture, I'd like to request you to pause the video whenever you need it and keep pen and paper with you so that we can solve problems to consolidate our understanding. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about Ohm's Law and we're going to learn basic circuit terminology such as node, mesh, loop, and branch. Resistivity expresses the material's ability to resist or limit current flow. So let us just say there is a piece of cylindrical wire uh, whose length is L and cross-sectional area is A. And the resistivity of the material of that uh, wire is rho here. So the resistance of that piece of wire, R, is equal to rho L by A. Rho here is the resistivity of the material and its unit is ohm meters. So conductors such as uh, copper have low resistivity, while insulators such as glass, paper have high resistivity. And the circuit element used to model the current resisting behavior of a material is called a resistor. So for the purpose of constructing circuits, resistors are usually made of alloys and uh, carbon compounds. So now we're going to talk about Ohm's law, which states that the voltage across a resistor is directly proportional to the current flowing through the same resistor. Mathematically speaking, uh, V is proportional to I. Now we can write this proportional proportion with the proportionality constant V equals to I R, where R is the proportionality constant, and this is basically the resistance. So this proportionality constant, the resistance, R, of an element denotes its ability to resist the flow of electric current, and the unit of resistance is ohms. Now we must not confuse resistance with resistivity. These are two separate things. Resistance depends on the dimension of material, of the material, whereas the resistivity of a particular material is constant. So if you have to change rho or resistivity, you have to change the material. Okay, so if for a resistor we plot V versus I, that is voltage versus current, we get a straight line that goes through the origin. How do we know that? So we just saw from Ohm's law that V is equal to IR, which is basically the equation of a straight line. And the resistor that obeys Ohm's law is known as a linear resistor. So the slope of this straight line is the uh, resistor of the resistance. It is also possible for a resistor to be nonlinear. So in figure B, we see the IV characteristic of a nonlinear resistor. So a nonlinear resistor has IV characteristics a curve that is not a straight line and we must also note that only linear resistors obey Ohm's law and non-linear resistors do not obey Ohm's law but for all practical purposes linear resistors are the commonest element uh, that is used in electrical circuit analysis now we're going to talk about conductance and power Conductance is basically the opposite thing of resistance. So conductance is a measure of how well an element will conduct electric current. So the unit of conductance is mole, ohm spelled backward, or uh, Siemens, basically. So one Siemens equals to one mole equals to one ampere per volt. So conductance G is equals to one by resistance, and if we apply Ohm's law here, it goes to I by V. Okay, now in the equation of power, power equals to voltage times current. If we apply, if we use Ohm's law and replace V in the P equal to VI equation, we obtain an alternative representation of the power equation P equals to I square R. Again, if we use Ohm's law and replace I here in the P equal to VI equation, 
we obtain an alternative representation of the power equation v equals to v squared by r. These are some of the uh, symbols and images of commonly used resistors. So this is the fixed resistor with uh, color coding to identify the value of that resistor. It, alternatively, you can also use a multimeter to uh, determine the resistance of this resistor. And this is a symbol of a variable resistor, and this is a symbol of a potentiometer. Potentiometer is basically a type of a variable resistor. And the image on the right here, this one is the potentiometer, and this one is the variable resistor, where we turn this knob to change the resistor of the variable resistor. If someone says that there is a short circuit between two points, this means that the resistance between these two points is zero. Since V is equals to IR from Ohm's law, if resistance equals to zero, then the voltage between uh, those two points is also zero. But the current I is not necessarily zero. Why do I say that? Note here, V is equals to IR, to make V equals to zero, both I and R need not be equal to zero. If V is equals to zero, V is equals to zero, if one of them is zero. Now for short circuit, R equals to zero, which means that the current I may or may not be zero, and it depends on the rest of the circuit. So the bottom line is that for short circuit, the voltage is zero but the current could be anything so here between this point and this point there is a short circuit so if we try to measure the resistance between these two terminals we'll see that the resistance is zero and the voltage is also zero but the current is not necessarily zero the current depends on the rest of the circuit that's inside this box in practice a short circuit is usually connecting a wire and we assume that wires are perfect conductors and that their resistance is zero. Okay, let's now talk about open circuit. If someone says that there is an open circuit between two points, like here, there is nothing connected between these two points. An open circuit means resistance equals to infinity. Since I equals to V by R from Ohm's law, if R equals to infinity, then current is zero. I mean, this is fairly obvious because there is no medium for uh, current conduction. Th there is no wear, actually. So the current must be zero. But the voltage V here is not necessarily zero. It depends on the rest of the circuit inside the box. So for an open circuit, the current is zero, but the voltage could be anything. In practice, an open circuit is basically disconnecting a circuit element. So here's an, here's an example of uh, short circuit and open circuit. So there is an open circuit between the terminals A and B. So here nothing is connected. There is no wear, there is no circuit element. So the current is zero because there is no wear. But the voltage VAB is not necessarily zero. It depends on the voltage across this resistor and this resistor. Now there is a short circuit between uh, CD, so the voltage difference between CD, VCD is zero because the resistance of the wear is zero, but the current through uh, this short circuit is not necessarily zero. It depends on the rest of the circuit. So hopefully you have now a clear idea what open circuit and short circuit is. Okay, now let's talk about some basic circuit terminology. So first, we'll learn what a node is. A node is a junction where two or more elements are connected. So node is basically a point where at least uh, two branches, two or more, at least two branches emerge from that point. So the point A here is a node because uh, it has two branches, this 10 volt branch and 5 ohm branch. So a node is usually indicated by a dot in a circuit and often by a name 
usually one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D. Now the important point is that if a short circuit or a connecting wire connects two nodes, the two nodes are considered as a single node. So for instance, this point, this point, and this point here are all connected using uh, short circuits or wires. So they're not considered as separate nodes. So they're considered as the same node as uh, B here. Again, in the bottom we see that there are four points, this one, this one, this one, this one, all connected uh, by short circuits. So these are not considered like four separate nodes. They're considered one node and uh, this is the node C. So the circuit above has three nodes, node A, node B, and node C. So if several nodes are connected by short circuits, we do not consider them as separate nodes. Instead, we consider them as the exact same node. So to further show this point, I have removed the short circuits or wires to show in the bottom that uh, point B here is basically one point. Similarly, I've removed this short circuit or where this short and this short and connected all these four points together to show that this is basically one point or one node. So the main message of this is that if several nodes are connected by short circuits, we do not consider them as separate nodes. We consider them actually as the same nodes. Okay, so what is a branch in a circuit? A branch basically is an element. So each circuit element is a branch. Therefore, the number of branches in a circuit is equal to the number of elements in the circuit. So a branch basically resides between two nodes. So in this circuit, for instance, you have one, two, three, four, five branches. So the number of branches in a circuit is equal to the number of elements in that circuit. Okay, the next term is loop. A loop is basically any closed path uh, going through a circuit element. So in order to identify a loop, we select a node as a starting point and draw a path through the elements of the circuits and other nodes until we come back to the same node where we started. Now there is only one rule. A loop can only pass through a node one time. And it's perfectly fine if there is a loop inside another loop. So for instance here A, 5 ohm, 2 ohm, C is 10 volt, A is a loop. Again A, 5 ohm, B, 3 ohm, C, 10 volt, A is another loop. And A, 5 ohm, B, 2 ampere, C, 10 volt, A is another loop. Again, B, 3 ohm, C, 2 ohm, B is another loop. Again, B, uh, 2 ampere, C, 2 ohm, B is another loop. And the last loop is B, 3 ohm, C, 2 ampere, B. So there are in total 6 loops in this circuit. Now, what is a mesh? So a mesh is basically a loop that does not contain any other loop. So a loop can have another loop inside it, but a mesh cannot have another mesh or loop inside it. The easy way of figuring out the number of meshes or identify the meshes is thinking about the circuit like windows. So for instance, this circuit, if we consider it as a window, there are basically three windows, this one, this one, and this one. So this circuit has basically three meshes. So a mesh is basically considered as a window of the circuit. So the first mesh is A, 5 ohm, 2, 10 volt A. The second mesh is B, 2 ohm, C, 3 ohm B. And the third mesh is B, 3 ohm C, 2 ampere B. Okay. Hopefully you have a clear idea what nodes, meshes, loops, and branches are. Now please pause this video and write down the number of nodes, meshes, loops, and branches in the circuit. So please pause this video and then we'll match our answers.
Okay, so hopefully you've been able to identify the notes here. And uh, yep. Okay, now we're talking about what planar circuits and non-planar circuits are. A planar circuit is a circuit that can be drawn on a 2D surface without any crossing branches. So you can draw, if we can draw a circuit on a piece of paper without any crossing branches, that circuit is a planar circuit. And if there's at least one crossing branch, it's called a non-planar circuit. So this circuit, for instance, it looks, it appears that it's a non-planar circuit because, you know, there is a crossing branch here, but it can be redrawn with this R7 outside so that there is no crossing branches. So this circuit, even though apparently there is a crossing branch, it is actually in fact possible to draw this circuit without any crossing branches, and therefore this is a planar circuit. And this is an example of a non-planar circuit. So even if you draw this R8 resistor outside, this R10 resistor still overlaps, and there is a crossing branch. And if you draw this R10 resistor outside, R8 basically has crossing branches. So this is an example of a non-planar circuit, because we are unable to draw this circuit without any crossing branches. So if a circuit has at least one crossing branches, it's called a planar circuit. And if a circuit does not have any crossing branches, it's called a uh, planar circuit. So at least one crossing branch, non-planar. No crossing branch, planar circuit. Okay, now please pause the video and try to identify the number of nodes, meshes, and loops, and branches in the circuit. Okay. So hopefully you've been able to identify the nodes. So nodes are this one, one, two, three, and four. Branches are one, two, three, four, five, six. Loops are one, two, three, four, five, and six. And meshes is just the number of windows. So this one is a mesh, this one is a mesh, and this one is a mesh. Okay, now please pause this video again and try to identify the number of nodes, meshes, loops, and branches in the circuit of figure B. And then we'll match our answers. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to identify the nodes. So here we have node 1, 2, and 3. So all of these belong to the same node. Number of mesh is basically uh, this one this point 5 ohm, 6 ohm and 10 volt and the other one and branches is basically the number of circuit elements so 1, 2, 3, 4, there are 4 branches and loops is basically this one is a loop this one is a loop and this one is a loop so there are 3 loops in this circuit so hopefully you have a clear idea what nodes, branches, loops and meshes are Okay, there is one last exercise, so please pause this video and identify the nodes, meshes, and loops, and branches, and then we'll match our answers. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten something like this. The circuit has three nodes, this, one, two, three, five branches because of five elements, six loops, and three meshes, one, two, and three. Okay, so this concludes our lecture on basic circuit uh, variables and th important circuit terminology. Now, if you have any question, uh, please feel free to uh, write down in the comment section. Thank you.